All right, good morning, everybody. We are sliding back over towards the decimal side of things. Today, get ready for lesson 102. We are talking about subtracting decimal numbers. And the big thing to remember, we've covered this before. If one number in an equation is written with a decimal point, they all must be written with a decimal point. How many times have you heard me say that? So we've gone over these three steps before also. Write a decimal number at the end of any whole number. If you add three, just pin a decimal point to the end of it. Step number two, line the numbers up at the decimal point, not on the right side. And today, especially since it's subtracting, fill in empty places with zeros. So if you're trying to subtract 3 minus 2 and 24 hundreds, this is how you want it set up, right? So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Here we're trying to subtract 4 tenths minus 23 hundreds. I already lined them up at the decimal point. Just bring the decimal point straight down but I do have to go and fill in an empty spot with a zero. I can't go zero minus three, so I have to go and borrow, right? Bring one over, 10 minus three is seven, three minus two is one, and since this is just 17 hundredths, we do want to start it off with a zero in the ones place. We still call it 17 hundredths though, not zero and 17 hundredths. So even if the book has them set out horizontally, my advice, set them up vertically, lining them up nice, neat, and straight at the decimal point, right? So the six right here, just pin a decimal point in the end, fill in your empty places with zeros, and get ready to start subtracting, right? You can't go zero minus seven. Go over to your neighbor, he still has zero. We gotta reach all the way to the ones place to find something to borrow. Pay off in the tenths place so that 10 now becomes a nine and we can finally borrow one over to the hundredths place. And we're ready to subtract. 10 minus seven is three. Nine minus eight is one. Bring the decimal point straight down in the answer. Five minus four is one also for a final total of one and thirteen hundredths. One more like this. Again, even though the book might have them listed out horizontally, we have to set them up vertically, right? There is no way we can be successful on these trying to do them all in our head if it's a borrowing problem. Let's go and pin a decimal point at the end of the whole number. Fill in empty places with zeros. And 5 minus 0 is 5. Bring the decimal point straight down into the answer. And 6 minus 3 is 3 for a final answer of 3 and 5 tenths. So check out this one in a story problem. Nick poured 1 and 3 tenths liters of orange juice out of a full two liter bottle. How much juice was left in the bottle? Obviously it's gotta be a subtraction problem. I got the whole number two, but I wanna write it with a decimal point because I have to go and subtract one and three tenths from it. So I'm just gonna write it out as two decimal zero, right? Now I'm gonna get ready to subtract one and three tenths and get ready to subtract zero minus three. I can't do it, so I have to go and borrow. 10 minus three I can do, that becomes seven. Bring my decimal point straight down, and one minus one is zero. I wanna have a zero if I don't have any whole number value. For a final answer of, seven-tenths of a liter of juice. And our last one on this pretty short and easy math lesson. The land area of Long Beach, California is 79 and six-tenths square miles. 
the land area of Jersey City, New Jersey, is 24 and 3 tenths square miles. Here is a clue word about how much greater is the land area of Long Beach. Turns out we have to do some rounding here, right? 79 and 6 tenths because they don't want to know exactly how much larger. They want to know about how much larger. So I'm going to round 79 and 6 tenths to about 80. And 24 and 3 tenths, 3 tenths is less than half, so I'm going to keep that to be about 24. And now I am ready to go and subtract, right? So 0 minus 4, I can't do it. Cross out 1 and pay the neighbor. 10 minus 4 would be 6. 7 minus 2 would be about 56 square miles. And since it is an area problem, we want to make sure that when we label it, give it the proper label, not 56 miles. We got to make sure we have a little 2 in the corner or write out the word square. About 56 square miles. And it is about that easy today. You're probably going to want to scratch a piece of paper and a pencil for the Socratic quiz. And good luck.